for people that um, come here for the first time, I, I think obviously the drive up the main driveway is pretty stunning. It's architecture, it's history, it's location, 140 acres in one of the greatest resort communities in the world. It's this great balance between preservation and modernization. I have been uh, with the Breakers for 31 years. Came here in 1985. In 1994, I became president of the company, and it was a great time to be here because we were at that point embarking on a new strategy for this historic property. We had to move forward. We couldn't hang on to the past. One of the things we learned early on was that while we, I think, picked the right position, a balance between preservation and modernization, and we had ideas or visions, we're not architects. We interviewed a number of architects and we ended up selecting Peacock and Lewis very early on. We initially started our work here at the Breakers nearly 25 years ago. We were part of a design competition with other area architects. There was a front loggia on the the hotel. They asked if we could create a retail environment uh, out of the loggia. We created Palm Court, which is a very intimately scaled courtyard where you can grab a, a morning coffee and a Danish, get caught up on the morning's news. So we were commissioned to rebuild the beach club and do an addition onto the hotel, which is today is known as the Ponce de Leon ballroom and pre-function space, and do it in a very short time frame. The uh, Ponce de Leon ballroom, an in interesting fact about that project is that it uh, has a full basement. People say a basement in Florida. Well, we created a basement in Florida right next to the Atlantic Ocean, about 100 feet away. In that 15,000 square foot ballroom, you'll, you'll have one large ballroom, three junior ballrooms, and breakout spaces out of the two side uh, junior ballrooms. Putting the pen to paper, or playing the piano, as you say, um, was um, a lot more complicated than I realized. And it, and it shows how capable our architects are and, and have been. They really understood the vision and how to execute it. What was interesting about the recreation of the Beach Club is we did introduce the folding wall system that opens the interior dining space to the exterior. It's an environment that flows from the indoor dining to the outdoor covered dining to the umbrella dining and then out to the pool deck. We've been doing this for 25 years. I, I, we've had nonstop restoration or modernization projects for 25 years and Peacock and Lewis have been here for the entire ride. In other words, Peacock, we're almost like a partnership or, or they're a subsidiary of ours. They were up for that challenge. They knew it couldn't just be another project. We all came up with the vision to move the fitness center to the penthouse overlooking the aquatics complexes, the beach and the ocean beyond. The challenge was structural. We were proposing to put a large facility, another f complete air conditioned floor with its own roof on top of an existing structure. It was one of those where you had an aha moment. We wound up saying, why don't we just stack the walls on top of the walls below? And that's essentially what we did. There's these really beautiful white acrylic lighting panels up in the vaulted ceiling that nods to the seaside location. And there's a beautiful contemporary stainless steel railing 
textured white tile that surround the mirrors. Very contemporary, light, airy. The overall goal was to make this building look like it's all one entity and it wasn't some addition that was just glommed on top of it. And I think we were successful in doing it. The initial response from our guests and from really experienced luxury travelers has been comments to the effect of, this is the best fitness center I've seen at any luxury hotel anywhere. Doesn't feel like an annex or, or an appendage, that it flows beautifully and gives us an even greater point of differentiation. When we later on did the spa, as the program was laying out, the proportions of the room just didn't feel right. And because I was involved with the project early on, we built the building, I recall that we had large spans of, of the trusses that would allow us to maybe potentially move part, remove part of a loggia wall. The floor plan was completely reconfigured. That spa was designed 10 plus years ago, and spas just weren't what they are today. So we made it work to work better with the client experience and the staff flow. There's not that many seaside spa environments, so we used that opportunity to incorporate a courtyard. Use the theme of the oceanfront environment to theme all of the interior architecture and finishes to the spa. Gray wash wood floors tiles that look like sand, pebble flooring, mother of pearl accents. Keep it clean and modern, but still throw in those little elements of the seaside location. You'll see some unusual suites that, that incorporate a lot of natural daylight. And when you think of a spa, you think you're kind of in a dark uh, environment that uh, does not see the light of day. Here we give you an opportunity to rent a suite that opens to a courtyard so you can continue your treatment outside. The spa, you know, for people who saw it before and after, they literally see their jaw drop and they think it's stunning. Paul and I enjoy talking about a marquee project here at the Breakers called the HMF, the Henry Morrison Flagler. in a historic envelope of Italian Renaissance architecture, hand-painted ceilings, fine detailed millwork, cut in, in, in chiseled stone. Out of that, they took the risk of creating what is now HMF, a very contemporary, swanky nightclub environment where the beautiful people come and visit, have small plates and drinks, it started with learning that you cannot just hold the line or hang on to the past. You, if you really want to um, move ahead, much less hold your prominent position that we, that we hold, you, you've got to go out there and you've got to push a little harder. And, um, and that's what we did. For the rebuild of the Golf and Tennis Club, we moved across the street, uh, recreated that uh, bungalow, uh, Long Island seaside architecture in a way that it created a great central gathering spot for not only the tennis players, but the after golf environment. either dine downstairs on a covered loggia and have a drink, or most of uh, the clients and, and patrons will go upstairs, sit out on a covered terrace. Created a very special environment there. I can tell you Brian Idle and before him Paul Neff and Steve, Susan, Janine, um, I don't know who I leave out on the team, hopefully no one, but um, this has been, we're like kids in a candy store. You know, you eat, sleep, and drink this stuff. And when you're given a task or an assignment, it becomes your, almost your obsession at that point. And this being the caliber of what it is, the hotel itself and the history of it, it puts that little bit of pressure on you to, to do it and do it right. We've spent um, $500 million on the property and, um, and 
25 years of effort. So we, we, as we think about the future now, um, part of it is specific. You know, we're going to do the seafood bar next. The South Ocean Tower. You're either moving forward or you're moving backward. And we're going to continue to move forward. Now, our definition of that will always be this balance. Moving forward may mean we've got to do more restoration. Or it may mean modernization. I think it means both. But I think to a greater degree, it's just a mentality that we can never let up. We can never rest on our laurels. This property throughout its 120-year history, there were many times when it was at the top. And, and based on my years here and then study of the past, and there were times when it had fallen behind. And, and that typically involved um, an attitude, more than say an economic situation, that too, right? But, but an attitude that, you know, we're the best. You know, why, why do we have to do anything else or anything different? That will never happen here, I don't think, again. I think this has been so successful finding that balance and building on it. So the future to me is, is exciting. There's a lot more work to be done and new ideas to be executed. Thank you.